we already knew that Trump wasn't taking the coronavirus, um, the stuff seriously, but he only cared about it when the coronavirus hit the red states. Um, the Trump administration's catastrophic response to the coronavirus, like many of the administration's crimes and blunders, um, committed a broader Republican ideological ideological failure with, with um, Donald Trump's idiosyncra idiosyncratic pathologies. The broader ideological failure is the right's paranoid rejection of science and imperi empiricism, which has been building up for decades. The unique Trumpian contribution, one that almost no other Republican president would share, is an almost sociopathic, sociopathic indifference to the well-being of Americans who didn't vote for him. The latter element is the subtext of a remarkable passage in the Washington Post in the past couple of weeks. Senior advisors began presenting Trump with maps and data showing spikes in the coronavirus cases among our people in the Republican states. A senior administration official says they also shared proje projections predicting that virus surges could soon hit politically important states in the Midwest, including Michigan, Minnesota, and Wisconsin. The Post casually notes that new approach that is framing the electoral map implications of a mass um, casualty event seem to resonate. We should be cautious about reading too much into a single anonymously sourced anecdote. Um, but Trump's but Trump's inability to separate his campaign strategy from his duty as a fake president has been sitting in plain sight throughout his tenure. He broadcast his favoritism for constituencies that supported him in the election, promising to protect farmers, miners, veterans, and frequently emphasizes his love and appreciation for states that voted for him. Technically, 45 can't feel love because he's never been... Technically, 45 can't show love because he's never been loved in return, so that would be kind of hard to handle, to show that. Um, Trump's mishandling of the Hurricane Maria has proven to be a revealing an, an anecdote to the cri current crisis. The administration's lethargic response to a catastrophic disaster in Puerto Rico, which lacks representation either in Congress or the Electoral College, was reflected in the barely concealed campaign of abuse. Trump publicly lambasted Puerto Rico for getting too much money in stark contrast to the glee he expressed while gloating about the cost of his hurricane rescue efforts for Texas. Um, he cl um, um, Trump claimed that he paid billions and billions of dollars to the state. This is what he had said at a Klan rally in Dallas, and he and they said, "Thank you, sir, for being so generous in the hurricane." Forty-five can't be generous because he's never been generous a day in his life. Um, a political investigation found that the Trump administration and the fake president himself responded far more aggressively to Texas than to Puerto Rico, proving out the fake the fake president's boast. In a in private. Trump repeatedly asked if he could sell Puerto Rico to another country. An eerie foreshadowing of the present of the present moment on, um, can be heard in Trump's denial of the official death count in Puerto Rico two years ago. He claimed that after he left, it was 16 people that died. The 16 people was then lifted to to a couple months later to 64, and that was the official number. And then all of a sudden, then um, and then a long time later, that they did a report that 3,000 people died, and I was like, wait a minute, you went from 16 people to 64. And he, and he claims that they did a great job, and then you went from 64 to 2,000 deaths. How does it happen? And they couldn't explain it. If you read that report, it's not explainable. This same rejection of data has defined his response to the coronavirus pandemic, but the underlying motivation contains physical cyn cyn cynicism mixed in with the paranoia because Trump places no bio in the lives of Puerto Ricans. He is especially inclined to disbelieve any evidence of their suffering because he's a fucking fat ass and he doesn't care. Um, Trump has seen the coronavirus all along as a projection of the political campaign and private remarks to donors in March. He depicted lockdowns as a plot to hurt his poll numbers, which it's not. Um, they're trying to scare everybody from meetings, cancel the meetings, close the schools, you know, destroy the country. And, well, you technically have been destroying the country, and it took you a little under four years to do that. And um, and that's okay as long as we can win the election. That's all he cares about. As, as always, Trump's dark accusations of the motives of his opponents are simply a projection of his own mentality. In its early months... The coronavirus swept through um, coastal cities, especially in New York and its surrounding areas, and they seemed to spare the reddest, uh, reddest areas on Trump's beloved territory map. His denial that the pandemic would eventually spread was, was born largely of ignorance and willful self-delusion, but it was also something even worse, an act of willful, of willful neglect, political malice, and not just a mistake, but it was also a crime. So if you like the video, so if you like the video, give the video a like and subscribe to my channel, Ramp and Mike. And also hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified when a new video comes out. And thanks for listening.